what inspired you to begin this podcast? What inspired me? I would say it's, you know, not to sound uh, too flamboyant, I guess, but I would say, like, I saw, like, a lot of people, and it's, like, something I've been wanting to do for a while, but um, the reason I wanted to do it is because, um, obviously, like, I was too much trying to be too perfect with things, right? Trying to have, like, the right equipment, like, right camera, right, like, microphone, like, you know, everything, right? But then I realized, like, perfection, like, if you're trying to be too perfect, like, it doesn't exist, right? So, you know, it's kind of like the paradox. Well, I don't know paradox, but it's like the fallacy, essentially, that um, try to reach for perfection, you'll never, you'll, you'll never get there. So you'll never start, essentially. So I decided that the best thing to do is to start. And the reason to start is that I feel like I've been, I've experienced, like, I've, I would say I'm pretty experienced in life with certain things. So, you know, why not share that wisdom online with other people as well? And, you know, hopefully I can make their lives better as well as my own. You know, and mm -hmm. it's like a mutual type of thing, you know, where, you know, as much as people can bash like social media, you know, there is a there is a benefit to it. And I feel like I have benefited from it. So why can't I give back? You know what I mean? Mm. You know, uh, it's very interesting you mentioned this. Uh, firstly, I like that you're doing this. You know, because a lot of times people talk or people have ideas, but not so many actually take action. So you're taking action and that's admirable. What I wanted to mention was um, I'd recently seen the Elvis film and you that that was rather flamboyant. Oh, and yeah. Uh, yeah, at first I didn't really like it. I thought it was a bit goofy, a bit cartoony. But after reflecting, I realized I actually really do like that film. The reason I like it is because when you witness Elvis's story, you see time and time again, um, things really didn't go the way he wanted them to. Like a lot of times, you know, life chewed him up. Um, he was beaten and broken too many times, but he he kept going through that. You know, he he kept he kept moving through the struggle. He had a lot of visions, a lot of ideas that weren't a hundred percent perfectly realized, but you know, he still pursued them. And in that pursuit, you can see that, like, he tried. He sincerely tried. And he's remembered for what he did. Like, it wasn't perfect by his standards, but he's remembered for it. And it's rather inspiring. So I, like that. I think it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I feel like, obviously, you try your best to be as perfect as you can, but if you're not going anywhere, then maybe you should stop pursuing it that hard. You know what I mean? Yeah, and it's something I was it. thinking of. Yeah, sorry. Oh, no, no, I was saying just do it instead of just waiting. Yes, yes. Something you had just mentioned right now, it, it reminded me of like Van Gogh, you know, and his entire life, the world really just spit at him. You know, nobody really believed in him. And no matter how hard he tried, it just never seemed to be going in his direction. And uh, now, fortunately for him, it has, but he doesn't even know that, you know? I mean, he was at his deathbed before any of this became... I mean, when you think of great artists, you think of Van Gogh, but no, he, he just, he, he would never know that. He never got to see that. So I think his story is one of those, like, I don't know. It's endearing in its own ways. It's unfortunate type of thing, right? I suppose so. Yeah, it, it really makes a person have to ponder about their own life and the trajectory in which they wish That's to take true. it. You know, it's actually, it's interesting you mentioned Vincent Van Gogh because I just remembered, uh, I'm sure you probably heard of Conor McGregor, right? Who's like, uh a very big mma star i mean he was like a double champ and everything right and even he had a quote like vincent van gogh or he said um i've lost my mind in this game like vincent van gogh so you know do you think it um I'm trying to remember the full quote i've lost my mind in this game vincent van gogh 
I've dedicated myself to this art, you know. That's basically what he's saying is that, you know, in a sense that, you know, you have to literally be obsessed with something, right? And then when you're obsessed with something, it's like, you will you will take that action, you know what I mean, instead of just waiting for things to be right. So where are you taking that? Well, basically where I'm taking it is that, um, you know, like the whole thing is with obsession, it's like, or yeah, basically it's something you really want to do, but like if you just wait for perfection, right? The goal is to get as close as possible, but obviously like it's impossible to literally reach it because perfection is essentially infinite. Right. There's always something that you can do better. Yes. Right. But you're but like the thing is, when you're obsessed, you don't stop. Right. Mm. That's essentially, what I'm saying is that was obsessed obsession, right? And like people who say that's not good. Well, whether you like it or not, you're obsessed with something. Right. Could be something really good or something very bad. Right. Or something. You might just be obsessed with mediocrity. Yeah. But, yeah. 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 You know, a lot of people obsessed with something. Yeah. A lot of people say, "Hey, I don't have time to do that." You know, I don't know how you how you do that. I don't have time for that. But it's like, if you examine, you know, their average ordinary day life, right, and that that includes all of us, really. Um, it's really just a matter of choice. You know, you could just sit down on the couch and have some sodas with your boys, or you could just, you know, glue yourself to your phone watching Disney Plus or, you know, social media or whatnot. Or you could take action and do something. Or you could, you know, carve out some time for a book, you know, um, create something, or learn something. So I think it really just factors down to choices, you know. Yeah. Because even those, like, menial things, right, like, because we're talking about obsession. I mean, habits are essentially an obsession aren't they yeah maybe not like consciously but they are an obsession to a particular lifestyle so i can see it in that regard yeah that's 100 percent true it's um yeah i mean what you said is that you have to make the time for it and um you know unfortunately it's like you know people have the time to like you know play video games right or watch like binge watch netflix or like whatever it is i mean and in moderation, that stuff can be fine, but in a way, like if you're doing it for so many hours, it's like, you know, you are obsessed with that. And then you wonder why things are not going that well, when you should be obsessed with this other thing that would be more beneficial. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think the unfortunate thing is in today's day and age, so many of us have sacrificed ourselves at the altar of distraction. And it's like, that's that's really tragic because... I imagine throughout history, people had time to just do nothing and to just think, just kind of sit there in silence or sit there in the presence of other people. Now it's like you you have to be in front of the screen, whether that's like your phone or your TV or your computer. And it's like, that's how life operates. 